Welcome to Korot 7 system. What are we doing here? Well, today we're going to talk about something called Actonian planet. Actonian planets are actually a hypothetical concept, but we think we may have found one years ago right here on Korot 7. And we're going to take a look at what Korot 7b looks like, and let's see if you can guess what Actonian planets are. So I'm going to zoom in really close to it, or I guess we're going to possibly even land on it. And it says here that it's a scorched desert. The temperature here is about 1500 degrees Celsius. Basically, it's very, 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 very hot. And if I were to land on the surface of this planet, you would notice that, well, it's actually not that different from any other planet we've been to, except that it's very bright and obviously very hot. But what you may actually notice is that this also kind of looks like a gas giant. If you look on the outside, and actually if you land on the surface again, you'll notice that it is sort of a gas giant. Now, Ktonian planets are that. They're actually gas giants that have their atmosphere stripped by the super hot sun next to them and expo expose the uh, terrestrial planet that hides underneath. And today I'm going to demonstrate this to you using Universe Sandbox 2 and we're going to create a Ktonian planet using a gas giant uh, and place it next to a star and then make it burn its atmosphere away and create this uh, really interesting hypothetical concept. Welcome to What The Math and enjoy the video. So this hypothetical concept is actually relatively easy to recreate in Universe Sandbox 2 uh, and despite it being hypothetical, it actually kind of makes sense. So imagine if, for example, our Jupiter was a lot closer to the Sun. So we're going to actually uh, decrease its semi-major axis to about, let's just say, 5% of astronomical units. So it's actually literally right next to the sun here. Here it is, orbiting really, really fast. Um, now, because it's so close to the sun, it's now experiencing a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot of heat, a lot of energy coming from the sun. And a lot of this energy, and specifically the solar winds that come from the sun, will start stripping um, Jupiter's atmosphere. And you can kind of see this right here in the material column, you'll notice that there's mass loss, which is uh, not as high as I expected, but it is pretty high. So it will slowly start losing its atmosphere. And after many, many, many thousands and millions of years, will eventually become the stripped planet. And here, um, when you strip all of the atmosphere, underneath all of that, you'll see that there's actually something like 6.4 masses of Earth left. Now let's do this from scratch. We're going to create a completely new system uh, and we're going to use... Let's actually use uh, something a little bit more interesting. Let's use Sirius. We're going to use Sirius as a star and because it's a little bit more hot and a little bit more massive, it will actually strip this planet a little bit faster as well. And now that we have our Sirius, so let's place a randomly generated gas giant right next to it. Uh, so actually first, let's place it a little bit farther away so you get to see what it looks like normally. Let's place it at a distance of about 12 astronomical units. And this is a pretty beautiful gas giant called Epotask. So it, its total mass is about 7.8 masses of Earth. This is its material composition. So underneath all this gas um, cloud, I guess, a gas atmosphere, which is about 5.6 masses of Earth. Underneath all of this, there is an iron and silicate core and a little bit of water as well. And in total, it should be approximately two masses of Earth. Now we're going to go into motion and change the semi-major axis to, let's just say, about 0.1 astronomical unit. And right away, you can see it started gassing out. This is essentially what's happening here. The sun is, or well, not the sun, but the star Sirius is burning its atmosphere away. And it started losing all of this atmosphere relatively quickly. Uh, I'm actually going to decrease this a little bit more because I think it's not far enough yet. Let's change it to 0.05 or about 5% of an um, astronomical unit. So here we are. We're now relatively close to um, Sirius, and we're just going to look at how fast it loses its atmosphere by going into materials again and looking at mass loss. So it says it loses 4.6 Earths per year. So it's not going to take long for us to essentially get rid of all of this hydrogen because this is what it's losing. You can kind of already see it decreasing as I'm increasing this to just like days per second, look at how fast the hydrogen is going. 
and everything else is increasing because basically this is the total proportion of materials so it's not that it's gaining iron it is not that it's gaining silicates but it's actually just because it's uh, a lot of the stuff that on the inside was hydrogen originally the proportion of other materials is increasing um and this is happening really really fast for two reasons one is because the star is very hot and has a lot of energy and a lot of solar winds two is because um this gas giant doesn't actually have any magnetosphere and this is what usually would protect the planet specifically jupiter in this case from losing all of its uh gas uh gas atmosphere the reason why jupiter is not actually losing that much atmosphere and will actually be fine for millions of years is because of its ridiculously powerful uh, magnetosphere all right and here we go so we've lost all of our hydrogen we're now going to move the planet back to where it was let's just say at a distance of about um two or maybe three astronomical units and make it cool down and take a look at its surface as well so this is apotac or apotask and we're going to accelerate time a little bit have it cool down to its temperature of about 90 degrees that's actually a little bit too hot i'm gonna move it a little bit farther away let's say four uh, four astronomical units and i think 5.9 astronomical units is where i actually want it to be because this will give it a temperature of about minus 14 degrees celsius and the reason i want that to be minus 14 degrees celsius is because we're also going to use atmosphere to warm it up later uh, let's help it cool in, cool down by basically changing it to zero and look at that it suddenly changed into an ice world and that's of course because we now have about 30 percent um, mass of this planet as iron about 60 percent as, as silicates but also about 11 percent as essentially water uh and the water here is what would make this a water world so let's go into we're basically are going to essentially terraform this now by going into atmosphere changing this to one atmosphere and look at that it is a water world and everything on the surface is essentially water and the surface temperature has increased above the melting point of water so this is basically a giant ocean and we can of course change that by reducing the amount of water and kind of basically converting water into let's just say things like um oxygen and hydrogen and here it goes so this is essentially a terraform ktonian world or ktonian planet uh, by the name of Apotask. It has a pretty awesome temperature of about 5 degrees Celsius that's slowly increasing and I think it will stop around 20 degrees Celsius. It has just enough water and just enough land for us to survive and essentially this is what a Ketonian uh, planet would be. But the thing is, the, the reason why you would not actually have these on the outskirts um, or at least very many of them on the outskirts is because for a Ketonian planet to be created, a gas giant has to be very close to the star first. And then, for some unknown reason, after it becomes a Ketonian planet, like for example, for quarter 7b to become um, a terraformable world, it then has to change its orbit to something along the lines of this, this planet here. Uh, and this was of course done in the game, but for this to happen in reality, a massive object has to basically pass by very close to the star, which is very unlikely, but it has to pass very close to the star and change the orbit of this planet and kick it to the outskirts of the solar system. Now, uh, it's very, very rare. I'm pretty sure it's almost impossible for us to, to, for us to find this in our lifetime, but I'm sure somewhere in the universe this exists. The chances for this to exist somewhere in the universe are pretty high. So having a terraformable Ketonian planet, despite being very, very ultra super rare, is still possible. And creating this in Universe Sandbox 2 is relatively easy as well. Now, we actually do have Coder 7B in uh, Universe Sandbox 2, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. And if you go into Planets, it's actually right here. Coder 7B is already a pre-made available planet uh, that you can place. Let's just place it in orbit around Epotask. And so here it is. Uh, now, the thing is, it is a little bit too hot, mostly because it's um, too close to the Sirius star. But in reality, what it would look like would be something like this. It would be relatively super close to the star, and it would be something we refer to as um, a hot Jupiter. So it's essentially a gas giant whose atmosphere is currently being stripped away from the surface. And here, it doesn't actually have that much hydrogen left anymore. As a matter of fact, it mostly has iron, silicates, and water left. But it's very likely that there's just a bit of hydrogen left um, to still kind of make it a gas giant. 
and uh, if we were to move it farther away and if we were to, if we were to turn it to an actual gas giant or basically a, a planet that is um, not ultra hot this is what it would possibly look like so this is the true face of kotor 7b and you see it uh, forming a water and now an ice shell taking technically making this a, a nice ball planet and essentially this is what Ktonian planets are and this is how you can create your own in universe sandbox uh and by the way the word Ktonia is uh, from the greek meaning of the earth and basically it's a term referring to the similarity um, of earth-like planets to the inside of the uh, gas giants including gas giants in our solar system specifically saturn and jupiter and usually the, the term Ktonian refers to various Greek gods from the internal underground, so from the underworld. And it kind of makes sense because uh, for this planet to exist, it had to have come from inside of the Jupiter or other, other gas giants. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video and hopefully you learned something from it and enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. And also share this video with your friends who may enjoy watching videos about space, science, math and so on. And if you would like to help this channel grow, don't forget there is a Patreon page that would actually help me quite a lot with making higher quality videos in the future. Thank you for watching guys, I really appreciate all of your support and all of your awesome comments that you always leave in the videos. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, game you later, and bye-bye.